Hey, Victor. Hey, Drew. Hello. Hello, everyone. Um, we will give you a few minutes to wait for others to join. Okay, um, it is five minutes after the hour. Um, this time I'm going to lead this 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 uh, meeting. So if you haven't done, uh, please put your name in the attendance list. Um, so I I try to copy the link of these uh, mini notes uh, in the chat. So everything is there. And also, if you have any any particular topic to discuss, um, feel free to to put it that topic in, in, the, in the agenda. Um, so I guess uh, that Lucina put that announcement and uh, the portfolio papers is going to be closing in seven days. Is that right, uh, Lucina? So probably if you have any particular idea, suggestion, uh, feel free to Submit your proposal. Um, it's a great event, which is going to happen before the KubeCon. And also, by the way, I, can you hear me? So, uh, I'm not sure. Oh, yes, we can hear you. Yeah, I hear you. Hi, Hi. sorry. I was triple muted. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. I mean, um, 
So, yep, uh, that's the first announcement that I that we have it for for the agenda. So, regarding the incoming events, um, the first one that we have it is the open source Latin America. Um, this is going to be virtual. So, I was checking the um, the list of uh, events um, or the, the the list of the topics uh, related to this particular event. So, I capture my attention of two for this particular event. Um, the first one is going to be a keynote. Um, and the other one is, is going to be delivered by Rani uh, regarding, regarding networking. So I don't remember exactly the, the cause of this event, but I guess it's uh, probably could be deserved to, to attend it. So maybe there is another one, another topic that you could uh, be interested in on attending. So I just try to summarize uh, what I consider interesting for from the networking perspective. Um, regarding the open source summit in Europe, I try to also uh, collect all the um, interesting sessions regarding networkings. Um, so probably I I just keep some of them. Um, and again, I, I'm not sure. I, regarding this particular event, I'm not sure if this is going to be a hybrid event or it's just going to be in person. So, but yeah, I've, uh, this could be some of the topics that you could uh, capture your attention or like maybe it could be interesting in attending. Um, there is a lot of uh, other sessions related with um, SBOM and UPF and other topics which maybe could be uh, also related with networks uh, in a non-implicit way, I guess. Um, so, yes. Um, anything else regarding the, the, the upcoming events? Um, anything that you want to add, uh, Lucina, or like... Um, you want to mention regarding this? I do have one a request for Cloud Native Telco Day. The current event is a half day event at KubeCon North America in um, Detroit. Mm -hmm. And it's currently scheduled to be an in person only event. Sponsorships are still available until August 12th. And um, if anyone's company is interested in sponsoring this event, then it would open up the opportunity for virtual attendance. Otherwise, um, it would be an in-person only event. So there's uh, two, two action items, I suppose, for us for Club Native Telco Day, which would be the CFPs due end of day next Monday, the 8th and then sponsorships due by the 12th to open up that virtual event. Do you know uh, if you need uh, volunteers for, for reviewing the, the papers or not at this moment? I'm not sure um, who's on the program committee this year. Got it, okay. I'll, I'll check in, I have that same question. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, that could be also a possibility to also participate in this particular event. Um, all right. Um, I have uh, two particular topics to discuss in this meeting. Um, the first one is uh, related with the PR that, uh, that Tom mentioned in the previous session. Um, so I don't know you haven't had time to take a look and verify or like review it. Um, if you haven't had time, I please uh, request to, to take a look and read that everything is covered and it's explained clearly what could be the the best way to, to, to document a, a best practice. Just try, uh, in my, my case, uh, the only thing that I suggest 
was to uh, restructure this particular thing because uh, I consider like there are a few things that are part of the initial bullet. So it's something that we can uh, discuss uh, online, offline. So, but also if, if you see something that is not clear for you or like you want to add more information or steps in the process, I encourage you to, to, to provide feedback. Um, Can you use the display the rich diff or whatever the little button that'll format one? it? Uh, yeah, and then do that for each one as we're looking. Oh, yeah. I was out a lot last week, so I'm just reviewing this. It looks good. It looks like a lot of the stuff that we had been talking through has been captured. Um, specifically, there's updates all over, but I'm specifically talking about CNF best practice process.md. Um, covering a lot of it, I think is good. So did was there any feedback last week? From no, well, the, the only feedback that I put it, I, I just put it in the morning, um, was just regarding this particular uh, uh -huh. point. Um, so my suggestion was if you see like all these three points or, or bullets are referring similar to this, so I just kind of like they are like sub bullets. Uh, oh, okay, of, yeah. And this is seems to be an example, like a, so probably it's not a bullet per se. All right, maybe it could even be. It could also be a sub. Yeah, O note or something like that. And what else? Um, yeah, what this... repo is this? Oh, this is in Tom's. All right, can we do a suggest edit on those things right now? I think that I did it in the morning. Um, so I mean, you've it's... already done a suggest edit. Yeah, yeah. All right. So it is probably here. Yeah, yeah, it's here. All right. Cool. But anything else? I guess like all of the. I mean, he also captured the this, the to do or like the next things to do. Uh, so I don't know if we should just remove it from here, or like just keep it as an as a comment. Hold on, let me switch back. Ideas. Um, well, I mean, if if it's a comment, I guess it's fine. Yeah, yeah, it's it's not. Oh, cool. So, or or we can maybe use uh, to do work. Like uh, I don't know if it is enabled for this repo, like uh, capturing all the to do. Uh -huh. notes as a issues or like a, as a PR, so no, as an issues. Issues, yeah. Probably more likely to get remembered if we create an issue with them. Did you know it? it well, let me check if it, it is passing the checks. Uh, so the last, yeah, the last thing was having some issues with the spell check. Yeah. Yeah, he has also mark link, uh, markdown link errors, and maybe, uh, yeah, that's that's the only two things that he has issues. Oh, another natural language error. Huh. API issue though it looked like wasn't it? It is. Oh, oh well, GitHub. That's uh, what? annoying. <laughs> and repo has to be repo story. Okay, yeah. That one yeah. probably should be adjusted. I think it's okay to say repo. Yeah. Not a big deal. Maybe the other ones are like more. Things to consider, like okay. So yeah, we have to contact Tom to modify those things, right? Or 
should we just fix them by him? I mean, we can do a suggest edit so that they can be accepted, but those aren't a big deal. <clears throat> I would like the sub bullets on that that you pointed out, I think are a bigger deal than these, but um, mm -hmm. it looks like it's a good iteration for the process. Get that out there and then get some feedback, maybe of questions like, a lot of it came from things where someone says, what do we do about this? So then we can answer that and add it into the process. Yeah. If they're not familiar. <clears throat> OK. Um, perfect. So it's, it's the only PR that we have open, I guess. Is you haven't received anything else at the moment, uh, or we? Um, well, the other one is from Jeff. So it's still. Yeah, we we'll left some comments, but I don't know if he. Yeah. Kind of feel like that one was unnecessarily blocked for too long and needs to move forward. It's not a best practice, it's use cases and user stories. As long as it provides some context that's helpful, then we need to move it forward. Okay. Um, but anyways, we'll see if um, we can maybe get Jeff on this come and wake and um, <clears throat> move it through. I don't think there was much left. No, Just clarification so. after clarification on little details. But again, user stories and use cases, it's not as, I think, urgent to have all that perfect. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I mean, the other regarding the, the issues that it is reflecting is just cosmetic things like uh, regarding marketing and, and which are not hard stoppers. So in this case, uh, should we request more uh, feedback or, or from? Yeah, just if you can, do you have access to make them restart over? No. Maybe get, I'll increase your access on that repo. So you can request that people redo their reviews. All right, you should be able to refresh and do it. All right. So just the answer. Yeah. Sounds good. I don't know why his keeps showing like that. All right. Perfect. And uh, the last one was from Ian. Yeah, it feels similar where it's, there were some requests for clarifications. Just need to accept those and move it forward. Okay. Should I just also request to take a look again? Or? Yeah. Maybe tag in in the bottom comment. Mm -hmm. Review and accept what is here.
All right. Well, those are regarding the PR that we have open. Um, there's only these three. Um, we have some issues. Um, okay, well, but this is address spike one, the PRs. Mm. She will just keep this open. I mean, some of them are more than one year older. So maybe it should be time to close them or like do something. I guess at least review. So the, the oldest one I think is one where we plan to and should move forward on creating that as a best practice sooner than later. It's one that was already agreed to by a lot of people when it was written up so, and we have content for it. Um, the resilience table, what is that one? The 198. I feel like Lucina may have created a PR for this already or somebody. Can you cr click on the link for the table of contents, let's go look. No, this needs to be added. Still hadn't been added. Okay, it's not there, yeah. So I really created problem. the issue. All right. So it needs to be open. Um, okay. So what else? Um, for multi multi interface, yeah, we have this discussion. Um, yeah. The the other day I was reading in a. Slack channel that someone was mentioning that there were someone working in the in the cap to add in um, this thing natively and uh, the CNI. Uh -huh. So uh, I haven't had time to verify that in that um, affirmation. I mean, I'm not sure if that is true. Like uh, Kubernetes. <laughs> Hands in propolixy, so like uh, it was just like a misunderstanding. So we should. I think this is a, still a hot topic, right? Like, uh, so I don't know. Maybe we, we should just keep it open or see if it, we can get more information and reactivate this particular uh, discussion topic. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be interesting if. Um, when this new changes in Kubernetes moves to production, like what the effect is, there's some thoughts that the current CNIs are going to be less, um, some of the features and what they're doing is going to be less uh, useful or not, not needed, but I, I'm not really clear on what all's happening. Are you in um, in the loop on the new changes that are coming? No, I don't know, but I would like to be involved like right? definitely because I have invested a lot of time in, in this particular topic. So I would like to know if someone else is, is doing anything specific in this. Yeah. So probably I maybe just assign to myself and and try to address this particular um yeah i know D daniel said that their um bell canada has been keeping track of that so you could investigate some yourself and maybe reach out to daniel and see if he'd be willing to come talk as well okay 
Is this his uh, um, GitHub handle? Yeah, that? that's him. Okay. He's also in Slack and the CNF working group channel and stuff, so. Okay. Got it. Um, so, um, right now, R3 or like still five? I think it's officially still five. So, I guess it's still a good idea because, I mean, maybe we, we should just reconsider like. And also, well, regarding this similar topic, um, we have these inter parties list, so we should keep it as it is, or like uh, try to reach anyone and see if um, if they have changed to the company, or like if they still interest on this, or like or at least add the new names. Um, we have new people. The call like uh, maybe it should be listed in this particular um, file, so maybe could be a good time to to see if uh, what we can do with this particular list. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, I I think eventually that's going to be become harder and harder to keep up with but you know it it does seem good to know like one of the one of the things is who is where when you have people move around and are they representing what company and stuff whenever they're interacting is important for some of the stuff especially like voting but um Yeah, for example, uh, Rani is now in the Linux Foundation, so I'm for sure. So, and it's right. Also, some others have been changed in, in this year. I th I think they may be um, GitHub usernames when you highlight over them. Do they go to their GitHub? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so one thing that we could do is open an issue and do like a a status check don't know what to call it victor but some type of status check and we tag everyone in this entire interested parties and then just say you know please provide an update if it's changed and if nothing's changed then you can leave it alone And since we have their usernames, then we can highlight and drop them right in, you know, turn them into ats and everyone will get tagged that's in the file and it's relevant to them since they're there. And for those who we don't have their um, GitHub um, username. Yeah. It's going to be tricky, but maybe okay. create another ticket to try to review and find um, GitHub usernames for the people that aren't there. Mm -hmm. You know, that could be an effort. And then, you know, if you can't find them, all right. Or... Okay. Um, so, so regarding the Ian's issue, um, 
so should we uh, reactivate or like consider or like something or just ignore it or I, mean, I, I don't know we talked mm -hmm. about it quite a bit and said that three seemed reasonable um so a PR to update that Okay. Yeah. Any volunteer like? I think it just didn't happen. Should I also assign myself like? A, I mean, it seems to be something simple, right? Like, do we have like a file or like it's just? Um... Yeah, let's do that really quick. Let's go get the files. So, sure, if you want to assign yourself, and then the other part would be let's go open the couple of files. So the contributor document, I think, was one of them. And then maybe the governance document. We're specifically talking about non-best practices, like the user stories and use cases. But you could put review in that ticket and then put a link to the different documents. It's going to be further down. You have voting procedure. Mm. Some of this is about voting for the co-chair. So this is, it's uh, further down in the document for the. Okay. There we go. Yeah, so it's delegating to the contributor guide for some of the changes. And then saying changes to the governance and charter need a higher amount of approval, although the decision process hadn't been finished. All right. You got, I mean, which part? Like? So click on the contributing guideline. Contributing. In the, yep. There you go. it is Except, uh, yeah. there you go so that's probably the only place we can look you know at other areas but i think that's it so that one would be three approvals okay Acceptance uh, steps. Um, all of this also has to be changed, right? Now it has to be three. Yeah. Um, yeah. <clears throat> there was a uh, issue. Um, number two one okay Discloses. You didn't create like any PR or something. Just, I'm sorry. What? I was I was thinking that that, that actually will be create like a PR, but it seems like just um. It just it was just merged, right? Oh yeah, I think you would have had to when you do the commit. You have to choose to 
you have write access right now. So okay. you'll have to choose when you're doing a commit, you have to do the drop down that says create a new branch. And oh. then after that, you'll create a PR. It's all right. You did a commit, you reference that ticket. I think that's probably enough. Okay. Hopefully I did it correctly. <laughs> yeah, it, it looked good. And we've had a lot of discussion about that one. And this is closed? I don't know. Yeah, now it's closed. Okay. This is related. Um, all right. Um, the only last two things that I just put in the agenda was regarding the the environment environment sustainability working group um, the comment that you uh well basically in the last the last meeting we bring that topic to discussion we provide the, the, the link to take a look oh yeah i i found two uh places in the um in the green software engineer um as a suggestions to regarding to the networking so especially for for microservices architecture, um, uh -huh. uh, the most obviously one was to optimize the, the network traffic, and the other thing was uh, understanding the the lat latency limits. Um, so, but this is when you are designing microservices and things that you have to consider in order to uh, improve your green uh, your food in the servers so just put those references up if anyone is interested to to read it or try to start discussion there all right um that's it um so uh, anything else anything that i haven't i'd covered? be interested to know like what are best practices that have the side effect of being um, also environmentally positive? So the, our mission right now is about best practices and it kind of tying in with efficiency and of other things on use of in Kubernetes framework and resources. I think that there's gonna be rollover. I mean, one of the main points that's been put forward is uh, better, uh, more efficient use of the hardware resources in Kubernetes, like a long-term claim. So it seems like there's going to be best practices that then end up relate in that and other places that end up having an impact that would be relevant to that uh, environmental sustainability working group and what they're looking at. Without having to just focus on the environmental stuff where you can come up with things that may not be aligned with the cloud native best practices. I don't think we have to do a, a full switch to look at that. We can say, what are the cloud native best practices that have a positive environmental impact? Sure, yeah. That'd be awesome to have those, those ones uh, also cover that. Um, All right. Uh, any any anything else? Any other topic? Any? Not from me. Um, nothing else from my side. Um, All right. Well, if that is the case, maybe we can discuss other topics the next week. And um, thanks also for attending the the meeting.
Thanks, Victor. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. See you next week. Still, bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.